Well, Jay, I think it's important as we look at these texts to understand that cultural worlds are a network of metaphors. They're not simply lists of things that one must believe, propositions or admonitions. They're examples, metaphors from everyday life that are used to make vividly real facts that are actually abstract, spiritual, or philosophical. And they can become so vivid in our imagination that it seems that they're meant literally. A good example in the case of Buddhism is the, idea, is the word Buddha, which means the one who woke up. And this is, of course, a metaphor. Other people to whom Buddha was speaking were, was speaking, were also awake. So it, it implies that it's as though we're in a dream and seeing things not as they really are which speaks to the point that our suffering is because we're not seeing the world as it really is. Yeah, I do think this is extremely important, Guy, because very often we're going to find that the philosophical points that are made in Buddhism aren't made by explicit argument or even assertion, but are actually made by the use of these very concrete, very vivid metaphors. Mm -hmm. And it's by appreciating the metaphor that we understand the idea that's uh, being addressed. So when we say that we lead our life in a dream, that's right. It's a way of thinking that we don't see things as they are. The things we see are imaginary, not as they appear. It's one of a whole bunch of metaphors of illusion. Mm -hmm. One that we find very commonly is that of the mirage. And mm -hmm. that's a slightly different metaphor. When we dream, the things we experience don't exist at all. Mm -hmm. But with the mirage, we see an actual refraction pattern, but we see it as though it's water. And so the mirage is a metaphor for something existing in one way, but appearing in another.